hello and uh, welcome to my git repository setup video so today I'm going to show you how to create a git repository on your local server and then push these updates onto the remote server of course you also need a git repository on the remote server so steps are almost same so first first you have to create a new folder myrepo.get and initialize it the only difference between creating a repository locally and creating a repository on the server is that we initialize this using git init and if you see there will be no folder structure in mypo.git there's just a hidden folder by the name of .git which contains some config files like this right and when you try to create a new repository on the server you have to initialize it using the bare option for example So what this bear does, bear actually creates the folder structure for your server repository. So that folder structure will be used for various purposes to keep the revision of your repository commits and you you can say history, you keep the data, so all the stuff, right? So this is you can say when you when you initialize it using git and it, it means you're initializing on the client client system and when you want to initialize on the server where actually your repository resides you have to specify the hyphen hyphen bare option with that right so this was like uh, I have initialized it on my local system and uh, let's move ahead and create one sample repository on on a remote server This is my remote server. I'm just logging in. So I have a special user called Git. You have to install Git core and Git packages. Simply, if you are running Ubuntu, you have to use this command: git git core. Or if you are running Fedora or Red Hat Enterprise Linux or CentOS, you have to use here for that or you can also download the source code and compile it at your convenience so there are plenty of options uh, it's up to you which one you want to opt for and create the sa same folder you can also create a different folder but it's just for the sake of convenience like if you have to locate your local and remote folders so it should be if it should be the same name so it's easy for you to locate later on and dot git is just nothing but it tells us that like it's a git repository right we can also call it git project so as i said we have to initialize it using bare option so now if you look into this so it contains all the folder structure that we need for git right now back to your client system so we are into report.get there is nothing we just add a readme file Re readme file for test project right and now you have to add this file and now you have to commit it add it readme now so far nothing has been committed to your server repository right so you can use your local repository as long as you want and once you are done with this you can simply push all your changes to your server so this is a very very 
you, you can say helpful feature of get you need not to make every commit to a server every time you're doing something you're doing number of commits but you are doing only on your local repository excuse me so let's say like okay I'm done with the commits now I want to make all these commits available on my server so that other people other developers who are accessing my repository maybe they'll access tomorrow or later today so they can just fetch the updates and start developing from there on so you have to you know add the remote origin so remote origin is basically so where remotely was the origin of your repository okay so here you'll give the IP first is a username and then is the IP I'll just get the IP This is the IP, copy it. Alright. So the folder name on the server is also my repo.get added. Now get push. So this command is used to push your changes from client to the server. Okay. So we are done with this. Now one important point that I would like to mention over here is that you have to create your SSH keys. I mean this is a very secure way to log into your Git server. You remember this command git remote at origin. So it has not specified it has not asked for any password, anything like that, no credentials. Why? Because I have created a public key of my server and appended to the SSH authorized keys of git user on my remote server so similarly if there are there are s number of users who are accessing your repositories they have to create their public keys send it to your system administrator he will add to the authorized keys and then those guys will keep on accessing or will be able to access your repository to use further so this is how you know you can create your local server you can create your remote server it's, it's a very very recommended way I always suggest to you that you create your local repository always because then you don't need to you know depend on the internet bandwidth or internet connection at all keep on developing the things locally and once you're done with everything just commit it and it will be in sync with your server so that's all for today Thanks for watching.